And now, return with us to those thrilling days of yesteryear, when out of the past comes a short history of radio. Let's talk about radio. No, not that kind of radio. The kind of radio Needham residents of a certain age will say, hey, I remember those sets. We had one in our house when I was growing up. Other Needham residents of a certain age will say, what in the world is that? Radio was first introduced commercially around 1910. There were no circuits, no internet, there were just glass-covered vacuum tubes, wires, dials, and a speaker. Radio changed the American landscape and unified the nation. The President of the United States. Five years of fierce discussion The concepts of many new television shows that you see today were created for radio about 70 years ago. All the singing talent shows you see are offshoots of radio's Arthur Godfrey's talent scouts, here they are, ladies and gentlemen, the Drifters. He's just a sentimental gentleman from Georgia. And Major Bowe's original amateur hour. Now, the first on the program is our original one-man band. What do you do in your spare moments? I am a spoonist, sir. A spoonist? Good luck to you. Radio had quiz shows like 20 Questions, The Whiz Kids. And here they are, the Quiz Kids, your own chief quizzer, Joe Kelly. Well, speaking of battles, we have a real one lined up for you today, friends. Quick as a flash. Quick as a flash. Time to wind up your mind with Hell Bros. <laughs> You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! What a ham. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. Radio had daytime serials or soap operas because most of the sponsors were soap companies. Women tune into the problems of Mar Perkins, Young Witter Brown, Pepper Young's family, Mary Noble, backstage wife, and young Dr. Malone, just to mention a few. Radio had talk shows with prominent people of the day discussing important events. It's a terrific race, ladies and gentlemen. The smoke and the flames now. And the flame is rising to the ground, not right to the mowing mass. All the humanity and all the... Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. America went to war. Radio broadcast play-by-play -play football and baseball games and broadcast boxing matches. Acclaimed announcer is Graham McNamee. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience. This afternoon, behind the Bill Stern the did many of the games. Now that's Davis. Davis is fading back. It's going pass. It's going pass. Down the goal. And it is accepted by Notre Dame. Radio also had new shows by famous broadcasters such as Walter Winchell. Mr. Mr. North for South American, all the ships to sea, let's go to France. Gabriel Heater, H.V. Kaltenborn, Eric Severide, and Walter Cronkite. The golden age of radio ran from about 1936 or 37 to around 1947. Radio had comedy shows like The Jack Benny Show. Jackson, yeah, look, man, you don't have to make any outside dates. While we're in New York, I'm going to take you around. Oh, sure. Just like last year. Before we left California, you said, Mary, when we get to New York, I'm really going to show you the town. Well, I did, didn't I? Yeah, from the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> well, they don't let you up there for nothing, sister. The Fred Allen Show. Tell me, Mr. Moody, what are your feelings about the radio? I don't hold with it, Bob. It displeases you? I don't hold with furniture that talks. Well, you, you have a radio. No, I had one in the hen house. Yeah? One day, all the hen's nests would be empty. Uh-huh. Next day, every nest would have two eggs into it. You mean? The hens were listening to double or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> The Red Skelton Show, The Bob Hope Show. But I really had a wonderful trip. Wherever I went, the soldiers toasted me, and now I'm back. A guy can stand getting hot, but for just so long, you know. <laughs> 
You know, the weather down there is like it is here. Of course, they have a light sprinkle now and then. Light sprinkle, that's South Pacific. For man, the boats, boys, the island disappeared again. <laughs> Radio had drama and mystery shows like Mr. District Attorney, Gangbusters, Nick Carter, Master Detective, Suspense, Lights Out, Inner Sanctum, and The Shadow, played by Brett Morrison. And radio had children's shows like The Lone Ranger with Brace Beamer as radio's Lone Ranger. A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, The Lone Ranger. Superman with Bud Collier as the Man of Steel. The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. And the Tom Mix Ralston Straight Shooters with Curly Bradley as radio's Tom Mix. Here comes Tom Mix, America's favorite cowboy, with another throwback Western adventure program. Up to me, cowboy! Boston Straight Shooters bring you action, mystery, and mile a minute thrills in radio's biggest Western detective program. There were also shows for Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, Little Orphan Annie, Captain Midnight, and Jack Armstrong, the All American Boy. Mail in premium offers were a big business and great for ratings. What kid could live without a Lone Ranger pedometer, a Little Orphan Annie decoder? or a Tomix magnetic ring, or a glow-in-the-dark arrowhead with a magnifying lens and compass, or a Tomix sheriff's badge with a whistle in it. When World War II ended, many technical skills and raw materials turned to the expansion of television, which was first practically demonstrated in 1926. Around 1947, many radio shows and performers easily made the transition into television, such as Red Skelton, Bob Hope, Milton Berle. Oh, we're the men of Texaco. We work from Maine to Mexico. There's nothing like this Texaco of ours. Our show tonight is powerful. We'll wow you with an hour full of howls from a shower full of stars. We're the merry Texaco men. Tonight we may be showmen. Tomorrow we'll be servicing your cars. Jack Benny, Burns and Allen, but some didn't fare as well, like Henry Morgan and Fred Allen. They just couldn't find a comedy format that was right for them. Radio adapted with the times, and now there are more stations and formats than ever. There's all talk, all news, all jazz, all country, all comedy, all, well, whatever. Well, it's time to end this segment and say good night. Perhaps George Burns and Gracie Allen can say it best. Gracie, say good night. Good night. Good night and thank you. The golden age of radio came to an end around 1947 or 1948, but it was just the beginning for the golden age of television, the birth of computer technology and telecommunications. The exploration of space was just around the corner. Well, who knows what's just around the corner today, so turn on your radio, fasten your seatbelts, and hang on.